I've had a lot of wine, so you're going to have to entertain me for two seconds. But I had this epiphany today, sitting in my Dululuness. It's a Saturday. I decided not to go out. I decided no more dates. In today's video, we'll explore several intriguing cases. First, we'll discuss the experience of a woman who bravely asked a man out at Walmart, only to face rejection. Additionally, we'll touch upon the perspective of a woman who believes that men should compete with her. Furthermore, we'll delve into the story of another woman who was rejected and ghosted by a chat. Lastly, we'll examine the situation of a single woman in her 30s with high expectations that have contributed to her remaining single. Stay tuned for these insightful discussions. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell to support the channel. Let's get started. I just asked a guy out and it was the worst experience of my life. Oh my god. I saw all these TikToks and they were like, you know what? Girls need to make the first move. 86% of women who make the first move have success. I'm an incredibly anxious and socially awkward person, but I was like, you know what? What is the worst they can say? No? Nope. There's something worse. Let's pick the scene. I was in Walmart and I saw this guy in the chip aisle and he had multiple bags of chips in his arms and I was like, that is my man. Okay, you got this. I walk up to him and I'm like, hey, do you like the talkie waves? I love the original, but I haven't tried that version yet. And he gives me this big smile. I'm like, oh my God, this is so easy. Why haven't I done this sooner? And he's like, oh my God, you have to try these. And he hands me one of the bags. And I have no game. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. So I was like, you know, I know this is really forward. And this is where I started to get really awkward. But I'm like, I know this is really forward. And, but would you like to go out sometimes? Face drops. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to crawl into my skin. I'm like, this, is this how all men feel? Like I am starting to sweat. And I notice he's not looking at me. Like he's looking past me and his face is just like mortified. I turn around, there's a girl, there's a girl and she is glaring at me. Oh. She looks at me and she goes, don't you want to date a guy your own age? Sorry, I have father issues, I guess. I mean, I'm in my 20s and he looked like he was in his 30s or 40s. And four people come at me, I couldn't see his ring because it was hidden by the various bags of chips. I'm the worst person when it comes to confrontation. So I didn't know what to say. I was just like, oh, I I'm so sorry. Here's some hot chip. And I handed her the bag that her husband gave me. And I have never walked out of a Walmart as fast as I have that day. I should also mention that as I was walking away, she said, you seem like one of those girls that would just love to flirt with married men, huh? And she said it so loud that 10 people turned around and her husband was like, Kathy, stop. So yeah, ask that guy out. What's the worst that can happen? You're called a homewrecker in front of people at Walmart? Picture this, you're at Walmart and you spot a man in his 40s with loads of bags of chips and suddenly you think, that's your man. It's a bold thought, right? People have definitely done stranger things in Walmart. Making the first move isn't always easy, especially when your mind starts conjuring up all the ways things could go wrong. But let me tell you, kudos to this leftover woman who takes that leap. Now, imagine if a woman approached and made the first move towards me. I'd be so touched that I'd cook for her. But sometimes, like in this scenario, it can lead to unexpected outcomes. When this woman made her move, she unfortunately barked up the wrong tree and got chewed out without a chance to explain herself. It was an honest mistake, and there's nothing wrong with what she did. Despite the outcome, she should be proud of herself for stepping out of her comfort zone. Here's an interesting stat. Did you know that 86% of women who make the first move have success? Imagine if more single women adopted this approach. Perhaps the rate of single women in the West would decrease significantly. The man she approached will never forget that encounter. It's so rare for men to receive compliments from women, and he'll cherish that memory forever. This just goes to show that society's norms around who should make the first move are changing, and we need more women stepping out of their comfort zones like this. And the irony of it all? She thought the worst thing that could happen was getting rejected by a man. But instead, she faced rejection from a woman, his wife. That poor guy is definitely in trouble with his wife for his reaction to this unexpected encounter. So I'm just coming out of a date and he's never going to see me again. But he asked me a question that kind of made me go. He jokingly was like, oh, so who are these other guys that I'm in competition with? And I, I had to be like, other guys? No, you're in competition with me. <laughs> you're competing against me because, listen, I'm fucking great. I'm, I'm fun. I know how to do everything for myself. But what is going to make you 
special enough for me to want to share my life with. I think this man was like a gas because he was just like, I was being dead serious. You guys have to remember, you're fucking great. And I think the longer I'm single, which I think is like coming on three, oh God, it's coming up three years now. I, there is something else that like I love more than myself. I'm very sure of who I am as a person. Oh, oh, men are scared of independent women. Like y'all should be. Like if you are not coming in prepared and sure of yourself, then you're not game. <laughs> Society often glorifies independent women, but let's be real. Being independent is just the bare minimum as an adult. Imagine if a man marketed himself solely as independent, it wouldn't quite cut it, right? To my fellow men out there, steer clear from women who make their independence their entire personality. Trust me, it'll save you a lot of heartache and headaches in the long run. Women, if you're searching for love, remember, a man is not your competition. He's here to compliment and bring something different to your life. I mean, why keep going on dates if you truly believe you're enough for yourself? right? It's important to be confident in your own skin, but don't let that stop you from opening up to potential connections. Recently, I heard a story where a guy simply asked a woman if she was talking to anybody else, and suddenly it's like he committed a crime. Let's give each other some grace here. Perfection doesn't exist, and searching for it only wastes time. Yours and theirs. It's not fair to project our insecurities onto others or play hard to get just for the sake of a challenge. Dating shouldn't feel like a UFC fight. It's about building genuine connections and companionship. There's a woman who broke up with her boyfriend after watching this woman's video. Brothers, let's hear from her. Let me tell you about a TikTok that I saw that made me end my relationship. And I know you're probably like, girl, you're crazy. Yeah, I probably am. I came across this TikTok video where a girl was talking about how she went on a date and a guy asked her like, hey, so how many guys am I in competition with? How many guys am I competing with? And her response was, you're competing with me. You need to make my life better than I already make it. And that's a mentality that I've never had before, which is so stupid of me because I grew up in a family where like being alone is the worst thing ever. So I was taught, you know, just choose the best man there is. Go out with a bunch of them, choose the best one. And that has not worked for me. This is so weird on how social media and people choice are influencing others, making them not wanting what they want and need in life. Allow other people choice to control you isn't it at all. It means you're making choice and living in other people's shadow. A relationship shouldn't start with competition. It's about connection. This isn't a battleground. I think I have a date tomorrow, my first date in Buffalo. Homeboy is going to help me do my taxes. We're going to get some beer. <laughs> okay, sounds fun. <sighs> and he ghosted. The last time we texted was 3 p.m. Plan was to meet up at 5 or 6 p.m. when I was done with my nap. So we texted at 3 when I woke up from my nap, and then I texted him again at 4.45 saying I was getting in the shower to get ready, and he hasn't answered me. And it's now like 5.30, so obviously we're not going on this date. This would have been my first date being back in the States, and my first date in a while actually. I don't think I've been on a date since like November. Genuinely excited about this date. He looked cute. We had good conversation. I hate dating in this generation. You know, maybe it was my mistake because he was very young. I'm 32 years old and he was 23. And he did a very 23 year old thing. And to be fair though, anyone who's even my age or older could still do the exact same thing. <laughs> exactly, Bo, exactly. <laughs> Plot twist, homeboy just fell asleep. So now, while I was waiting for him, I made other plans to meet up with Morgan and bring my dogs to a dog friendly bar. He's still gonna meet me there. I can't keep up with this stuff. Oh, I have food on my face. Dating is exhausting. My fit, casual and comfy, which I think is the vibe for this date. All right, let's go boys. I'm excited to bring my dogs on this date. I'm happy it's working out. Originally, he was gonna help me do my taxes. He's a finance bro, but I realized I'm just gonna file for an extension because my taxes are a bit confusing this year being that some of my income is from Turkey and TikTok. I'm just gonna file for an extension tomorrow. But it's nice to know, I mean, if this works out with him, maybe he can help me out with my finances. I don't know. <sighs> we'll see how it goes. Wish us luck. So can we talk about how amazing my makeup looks? This new makeup routine I've been doing. I feel cute for my date. Really interesting how some dates 
you're super, super nervous for and others you're not. Like, this is a date I'm not nervous for. People just give you a vibe that they're gonna be chill, like no matter how it goes. So I'm optimistic about this date, so I'm not really that nervous. I definitely don't like that he's late. He said he would be here in two minutes and it's been more like 15. Oh my god, I just got really scared. I saw a guy walk in and I was afraid it was him. So he said he would be here in three minutes and it's been like an hour? I tried to call him and it went straight to voicemail. So he's probably dead, right? Honestly, just what a terrible evening. I can't believe people. It would take me more mental energy to ghost someone at, to that elaborate of an extent minutes before we're supposed to see each other that would take more out of me than just saying hey sorry i'm not feeling it anymore tonight i'm just gonna stay in how hard is it to send that kind of text <sighs> unbelievable unbelievable what i just thought of is maybe a reason for why he bailed so on the walk there him and i are texting and he's like when do you think you'll get there and i was like my eta says 12 minutes later and then he goes okay love and i go love I was like, a bit too soon for that. And he's like, it's just a nickname. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm aware of that, but I prefer those kind of nicknames to be after I know someone better. Dude, we never even met in person yet, and you're already calling me Love? You don't even know my last name yet, but you can call me Love? I'm the only one that thinks that that's really weird. And so then I said that, and I was like, sorry, I know people have different opinions about that kind of stuff and then he goes my apologies well that was a stupid conversation also as as we were getting ready next to me he's like i don't know what to wear and i was like yeah me neither honestly i think i'm gonna dress pretty casual he's like well the difference is between me and you that you would look good in any that you would look stunning in anything and mind you that is like the fourth time probably that he's been self-deprecating about his own appearance he mentioned to me that even the previous night that he was nervous to meet me because he was afraid that i wouldn't like how he looked in person dude if you're gonna hang with me the self-deprecation's gotta go i find that very unattractive if you're very regularly in just one day of texting me talking about how you don't that you don't find yourself attractive how is someone else supposed to like you if you don't even like yourself oh something he also frequently said in texting that I didn't like was yes ma'am. At first, I kind of liked it, but then the more he used it, the less I liked it. For example, when I said, if you're gonna hang with me, the self-deprecation's gotta go. And he goes, yes ma'am. Ooh, ew. Like, I don't like that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And he used this emoji too. I'm sensing some passive aggression there. All in all, I know it was not meant to be. It's fine. I'll be completely over this tomorrow. But it's just frustrating because this occupied a lot of space in my brain today. And I think that's what really affects me is that this occupied time and mental space for me. And I hate when that is wasted on people that don't deserve it. And also, I'm just feeling really emotional today. Bo... I'm sure you could tell in the videos, he was just extra cute today. I don't know what it was. And he just seemed younger today, if that makes sense. I don't know. I know it's kind of weird to say, but I can't believe they're eight years old. And Bo just still seems like a baby, like a puppy to me. Yeah, I just really love my dogs and I'm really happy I'm with them. I'm just in the mood to cry. I'm just in the mood to cry or scream out the door profanities about men. I could do both. I miss my mom. Anytime I go through something hard, I just wish I could call her and tell her what happened and have her make some joke like, oh, he's an asshole. If I talked to her about it, she would say, forget him. He doesn't deserve you. And she would be really happy for me for everything I did to get my dogs back. She would be really proud. I just miss her a lot. You know what I think these tears are? I think I was really holding it together for a few weeks to problem solve and get all this stuff done with my dogs. I think I was really, really trying to hold it together. And now I think it's just pouring out of me. All the exhaustion and the emotions. And, and also I have to do my taxes tomorrow. <laughs> Why would the first date involve him doing your taxes? Seriously, it sounds like she might have misread his intentions. I mean... She's here thinking he has issues, but let's be real. 
she might be a whole walking red flag herself. Sometimes, it's all about understanding someone's humor and personality before jumping to conclusions. It seems like she might have scared him off with her nitpicking and criticism of everything he was saying. Imagine feeling like you're back in school with a strict teacher. It's enough to make anyone feel uneasy. Let's flip the scenario for a moment. If the genders were reversed and it was an older guy with a 23-year-old girl, he'd probably be blocked immediately, right? It's all about perspective and understanding. I don't blame the guy for his reaction. Saying, yes ma'am, was likely just his way of being polite, and calling her love was probably his attempt at flirting. No wonder he didn't show up. It sounds like there was a major miscommunication. I've had a lot of wines, so you're gonna have to entertain me for two seconds. But I had this epiphany today, sitting in my Dululuness. It's a Saturday, I decided not to go out. I decided no more dates. I'm freaking tired of dates. I'm in my early 30s and I spent a year of singleness. So I thought this is the year that I find my person, but you know what? Maybe not. That's the wine burp. And I said, and you know what? Maybe not, and that's okay. So for so long, my parents, gaslighted me to believing that I'm the problem, that I'm too picky, that my standards are too high. So in San Francisco, I've been going out with anyone and anything that moved, basically. Like, I just was, like, going out with people that I had no attraction to. I was kissing people that I had no attraction to. Like, as in, like, I had no excitement to kiss them, but I would just, like, do it, right? Like, I why? Why? And I realized that today, February 2023, wait, I'm drunk, February 23rd, 2024, I am not gonna waste my time anymore. I don't I don't wanna I am too cute. My personality is too great to date to go on dates with these guys that I'm not interested in, nor or kiss boys that I have no attraction to. Like what am I doing? I mean, you are cute, you are adorable, and your personality is honestly a nine out of ten. I do have some issues, like I am very I, I am very moody. I feel my I'm a cancer, so I feel my emotions, okay? And that's just me at baseline. But other than that, like I I love myself. Like I am literally the girl who looks in the mirror every morning and says, You're great, you're wonderful, you're sweet, you're kind, you're thoughtful. And I'm going out with these boys who literally have no personality. Literally put in zero effort. Literally, I just I just can't or have too many issues and need to go to therapy and I am choosing to be their mom or their therapist and that is not my job. So as of now, I quit. I'm done. We're done. We're done. We are going to enjoy this glass, this fourth glass of wine, maybe that entire bottle by the end of the night. We're done. It's fucking awful. Yes, her parents might be onto something. Sometimes having standards that are too high can backfire. She's a leftover. She'll become single at 40 soon. She's the problem. It's easy to point fingers, but maybe the real issue lies in not truly knowing what she wants. Sitting around and talking trash without intentions won't lead to meaningful connections. The problem here? She's only focused on what men should do for her, but what about what she can bring to the table? It's time to shift the perspective and think about reciprocity in relationships. It's clear she's had opportunities in the past, but perhaps things didn't go as planned, and now she feels out of time. The truth is, Dating nowadays can feel like a game of testing compatibility, often centered around physical attraction. Men are constantly facing unrealistic expectations, making it difficult to meet the standards set by some women. And guess what? That's often why she's still single, loving herself too much to settle for less than she believes she deserves. Women all like to think they have an amazing personality, right? But the truth is, sometimes they are probably just picky without realizing it.